Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on solving trigonometric equations in an interval. And I should point out that all these equations we're going to be solving only involve sine, tan and cos. We're not going to involve other trig functions like cosec, sec and cot, which we'll cover in a separate video. Now before we go on to solving these, let's consider the graph of y is equal to sine of x. Now if you put sine of 30 into a calculator, so we had 30 here, then we would see that we get an output of half. Sine of 30 is equal to half. Now can you see another value of x such that when we sine it, we also get half? Well, if we kind of go across here, across this line y equals half, we can see that sine of this value of x will also give you half and no others in this interval from 0 to 360. Now, because this graph is symmetrical about 90, can we see that if we go 30 up from 0 to get this half here, if you went 30 down from 180, we can see that this x would be 150 degrees. So we can see that if sine of 30 degrees is equal to half, then sine of 150 degrees by the symmetry of this graph around 90 would also be equal to half. And that leads to our first trigonometric identity involving these angles, and it's this, that if you have sine of x, that's the same as sine of 180 degrees minus x. So basically, if we knew that 30 degrees gave us an output of half, to get another solution, we could subtract it from 180. So 180 minus 30 would give us the 150. We'll see more what I mean about this in a second when we solve some equations. Now, there's other trigonometric identities we can also get using the other graphs. We also have cos of x is equal to cos of 360 degrees minus x. And we could see that if we were to draw a graph of cos of x. Now, can you also see, because the sine graph repeats every 360, so I could keep this graph going like that, if I was to continue this line y equals half, I would see a new solution on the next cycle of sine. So sine repeats every 360, I get one cycle per 360, and on the next cycle, we'll see another solution. So we can see if we've gone 30 up from zero here, if we go 30 up from 360, we get a solution of 390 degrees. So we can always add 360 degrees to any solution to a trig equation to get the next cycle. So we can say here that sine and cos graphs repeat every 360 degrees, but the tan graph, if we were to draw the tan graph, repeats every 180 degrees. So we had a solution to a tan equation, then we could just add 180 to it to get another solution, another 180, and so on. And then there's a final trig identity that we won't see in this video, but will be useful some other questions and other videos, that sine of x is to cos of 90 minus x. So for example, if I had sine of 40, if I subtract that angle from 90, that means it's the same as cos of 50. Just like sine of 30 is the same as cos of 60, and so on. So these are the four fat trig angles that we're going to use for all these questions here. So without further ado, let's solve this first one. We want to solve sine of theta is equal to half, and we want all solutions for theta in the interval 0 to 360 degrees. Now we've already done this on here, we know it's 30 and 150, but let's just see what we'd actually do. Well, we want to find theta to solve this, so we want to get rid of that sine, and to get rid of the sine, we inverse sine both sides of the equation. So if we inverse sine both sides of the equation, that inverse sine gets rid of the sine to just leave theta. An inverse sine half, if I do it with my calculator, well, we know it gives us 30 degrees. So inverse sine of half is 30 degrees. But then looking at these identities here, well, to get an extra solution for sine, we can see that we can just subtract that angle from 180. So I can just do 180 minus that to give 150. And you don't even need to show the working for that. You can just subtract it from 180 to get this other solution. Now we can get more solutions for this equation by observing that sine repeats every 360 degrees. So we could add 360 to this, so 390 degrees would be a solution, but that's outside this range of 0 to 360, so we don't need to get any further solutions. What about the second question? We want to solve 5 tan of theta equals 10. This time the interval is between minus 180 and 
180 degrees. Now we want to get theta on its own, so let's first divide by 5, so we get tan of theta is 10 over 5, which is 2, and then we have to do inverse tan of 2, which is equal to, let's shift tan of 2, we get 63.4 degrees. Now let's look at our angle facts here. Now the only one of these that involves tan is this one here. Tan repeats every 180. So I can always add or subtract, in fact, 180 degrees from this to get other solutions to this particular equation. Now if I add 180 to this, it's going to be outside of this range because it's going to be 243.4. That's above 180. But we can subtract 180 from this if I do that, and that's going to give me minus 116.6 degrees. And that will be all our solutions. Tan always has two solutions per 360 degrees. Let's do the third question. We've got sine of theta is minus half. And like before, theta is between 0 and 360 degrees. So we do what we did before. We just do inverse sine of that angle there. I'm not going to bother to write inverse sine this time. I'm just going to actually do it. Inverse sine of minus 0.5. And that gives us a solution of minus 30 degrees. Now, that's not a solution that we want because that's outside of 0 to 360. So what can we do if we look at this? Well, we can always subtract this angle from 180. So we do 180 minus minus 30. So 180 minus minus 30, which is clearly 180 plus 30, and that gives you 210. So do not ignore the sign. We do 180 minus whatever that is, in this case, a negative number. Now we've got one solution, but we typically have two solutions per each 360 degree range, because you can see if I cut the line, I'm always gonna hit it twice on this graph, unless you're at the top of this graph or the bottom of this graph. So we expect there to be a second solution per 360. Now how can we get another solution? Well we can see that sine repeats every 360 degrees. So if I do this and I add 360 degrees to it, that gives me a solution of 330 degrees, and that is my second solution. So I have this solution and this solution, and I'm going to put a strike through this to say that I'm rejecting this as a solution to my equation because it's outside the range. Now what about this next one? We've got question four is sine of theta is equal to root three cos theta, and we want the same interval as before, so zero to 360. Now if I look at my trig identities here from another video, I can see that tan of theta would be sine of theta over cos of theta. It'd be nice if this trig equation only had one trig function in it instead of two trig functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by cos of theta. And in general, when you have a mixture of sine and cos in an equation, dividing both sides of the equation by cos of theta is a good strategy. So let's do that. Sine of theta over cos of theta, we know is tan of theta. And when we divide this by cos of theta, that cos of theta just disappears, leaving root 3. And then we can solve it like we normally do. So if we do inverse tan of root 3, we get 60 degrees. So theta is 60 degrees. And we can get another solution for tan by just adding 180 or subtracting 180, because tan repeats every 180 degrees. So if I just add 180 to that, then that gives me the next solution of 240 degrees. And because tan gives two solutions per 360, they will be all the solutions that we want. Next we have cos of 3x is equal to minus half. And again, x we want between 0 and 60 degrees. Now if x is between 0 and 360, note that we have 3x here. So what we should do is we should rewrite this range in terms of 3x. So to do that, well I've multiplied this by 3, so I should multiply 0 by 3, which is 0, and 360 degrees by 3, which is 1080. And we'll see why I've done that in a second. So if we just inverse cos both sides, we'll get 3x here, and if we do inverse cos of minus half, inverse cos of minus half, I get 120 degrees. Now you might be tempted to uh, divide this by 3 and say x is equal to 40 degrees, and then use one of these trig identities like, well, I can subtract 
my solution from 360. So well, if x is 40, and I can do 360 minus 40. That would be wrong. You have to get all the solutions as soon as you've inverse cost here, and then, and then can you manipulate it by dividing each of those solutions by 3, because we have 3x. So let's get all our solutions. And notice, this is why we wrote our range, 3x could be anything between 0 and 180. So we need to have solutions here all the way up to 1080, not 180, sorry, and then we can divide by 3. So we can use this, 360 minus our 120, and that gives us 240 degrees. And then we can also, so we can get extra solutions because cos repeats every 360 degrees. So for this pair of solutions here, remembering that we tend to get a pair of solutions per 360, we can just add 360 to each. So if we add 360 to that, we get 480 degrees. If we add 360 to that, we get 600 degrees. And then we can add 360 to both again. So if we add 360 to that to get the next cycle, we get 840 degrees. We're still not up to 1080 yet. And if we add 360 to that, we get 960 degrees. At this point, and only at this point, we can divide both sides of this equation by 3 to find x. So x is equal to, well, the 40 degrees that we expected before. We can divide that by 3 to get 80 degrees. We divide that by 3 to get 160. We get 200 here. We get 280 when you divide that by 3. And that divide by 3 is equal to 320 degrees. And notice, look, we've got all the solutions up to 360 degrees. So the key point here is find all your solutions up to this extended range and then do manipulation in order to get to x. We'll see that when we do the second one here. If we have sine of 2x plus 30 degrees is equal to 1 over root 2. Again, with this same range. So x is between 0 and 360. So your step one should be to rewrite this in terms of what angle we have here, which is 2x plus 30. So 2x plus 30, well, we need to double that and then add 30. So if we double that, we get 0, add 30, we get 30. Now 360, if we double it, we get 720, add 30, we get to 750. So therefore we want all solutions for 2x plus 30 between 30 degrees and 750 degrees. So let's do what we usually do. First step is to inverse sign both sides to work out 2x plus 30. So if we do inverse sine of 1 over root 2, I know that gives us 45 degrees. Well, that is in our range here, but we get other solutions. So note for sine, we can get another solution by subtracting from 180. So that gives us 135 degrees. And we can get extra solutions, we know, because sine repeats every 360. So we get another pair of solutions by adding 360 to each. So if I add 360 to this, I get 405 degrees. And if I add 360 to this, I get 495 degrees. And if I try adding 360 again, so 405 plus 360, that gives us 765, which is over the limit. So we know that we found all the solutions we need. At this point, we need to manipulate all these angles so we have x and rather than 2x plus 30. So let's subtract 30 degrees from each of them first. So that minus 30 is 15. That minus 30 is 105. That minus 30 is 375 and that minus 30 is 465. And then we can divide each side of the equation by 2. So x is 7.5 degrees, or 52.5 degrees, or 187.5 degrees, or 232.5 degrees. And that will be all the solutions to this original equation. Next question, we've got tan squared of theta is equal to 4. And again, we want all solutions between 0 and 360. Now note that tan squared of theta just means tan of theta all squared. That's what that notation means. So what would we do to both sides of the equation? Well, square root. So we get tan of theta is equal to, now we do get 2, but also now we get minus 2, because minus 2 squared is also equal to 4. And that's a really common loss of marks where people forget that it's plus or minus when you square root both sides. So we have this or we have this. 
tan of theta is minus 2. So we do the usual thing. We inverse tan both sides. So inverse tan of 2 is 63.4 degrees. But we know we can get extra solutions for tan because it repeats every 180. So if I add 180 to this, I get 243.4. What about this equation here? If we do inverse tan of minus 2, we get minus 63 0.4 degrees. Now we know this is outside of our range, but we can fix that by just adding 180 because tan repeats every 180. So if I do that, I get 116.6 degrees. But we're going to get another solution because we always get two solutions per 360. So if I add another 180 to get to the next cycle, I'm also going to get 296.6 degrees. And those are our four solutions. So we have this solution, this solution, this solution, this solution, and I'm going to cross that out to say that's not a solution because it's outside of our range. Now the very final question here, we've got something that's going to turn into a quadratic equation. So we've got 2 cos squared x plus 9 sine x is equal to 3 sine squared x, and we want all solutions in the range minus 180 to 180. Now, firstly, note that we've got uh, a cos squared here, a sine squared here, and a sine here. Wouldn't it be nice if they were all the same trigonometric function? Now, the sine is sort of the majority function here, so could we change this cos squared x into sine squared x somehow? Well, yes, we can. If we look at these identities here, we can see that cos squared x is 1 minus sine squared of x. So let's use that. We have two brackets, 1 minus sine squared x, close bracket, plus 9 sine x is equal to 3 sine squared x. Let's just expand that. So we have 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 9 sine x is equal to 3 sine squared x. And then let's get it all on one side of the equation. So I want to get it on the side where the sine squared term is positive. So I'm going to add 2 sine squared x to get 5 sine squared x. I'm going to minus that 9 sine x. And then I'm going to subtract that 2 as well. Now, can you see this looks a bit quadratic-y? We have 5 something squared minus 9 something minus 2 equals 0. And what we could do is make a substitution here. So let y, it doesn't really matter what letter you use, be equal to sine of x. Now, that would turn this equation into 5y squared, because sine squared of x just means sine of x squared, so y squared minus 9y minus 2 equals 0. And if I just use the quadratic solver on my calculator, I get two solutions. I get y is equal to 2, or I get y is equal to minus a fifth. But we said that y was equal to sine of x, so therefore sine of x is equal to 2, or sine of x is equal to minus a fifth. Now we know that a sine graph only goes between minus 1 and 1 on the y-axis. So sine of x could never possibly give us an output of 2, so we can strike through that to say it's not going to give us any solutions. But certainly sine of x could give us minus a fifth, because that's between minus 1 and 1. So we do our usual thing. We're going to do inverse sine of minus a fifth, and that gives us x is minus 11.5 degrees. But notice we want solutions between minus 180 and 180. Now if we subtracted this from 180, so we did 180 minus that, that would give us 191.5 degrees, which is outside the range. Now we've got one solution in this range. How do we get the other solution between minus 180 and 180? Well, this, we could subtract 360 from it to get the cycle before. So if we do that, we minus 360 from it, we then get minus 168.5 degrees. Now we have two solutions here, and we know in general that we get two solutions per 360. So this is a solution that's in range, and this is a solution in range, and therefore we've solved this equation.